I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're speaking to Dr. Kent Murphy. He is a retired head and neck surgeon and a former NASA collaborator, and he is introducing young readers to the enchanting world of Gizmo, the Yorkshire Terrier, through his three captivating children's books, My Little Gizmo, which imparts life lessons, Gizmo in Space, which explores our solar system with hidden facts, and the forthcoming Gizmo Under the Sea, which delves into ocean wonders with mesmerizing illustrations and intriguing marine insights. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Atticus Publishing for helping us put him in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like him by subscribing to our channel. Doctor, you are a busy man. Your resume is unbelievably impressive. And now you're adding to it with children's author as well. So NASA collaborator, surgeon, children's author. Let me put you on the spot and ask you, what's your favorite role? Oh, my favorite role is uh, just being a grandfather. Yeah. Um, I've got a couple of grandkids that are going to grow up on these books. And um, basically, anything that I make from them is just going to go into a college education fund for the kids. So wonderful. Um, it's given me a good project uh, now that I'm retired from the Air Force and retired from practice. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Gizmo, I presume that's a real life dog in your life? Yeah. Gizmo is um, the dog of a friend of mine who spent a lot of time over here. And every time we went looking for Gizmo, we would find him asleep in the most unusual places. And it kind of struck me that, um, I mean, he had a great appetite. And it struck me that uh, young children sometimes, you know, have difficulty sleeping and they don't always want to eat the good food that we give them and that kind of thing. And so I thought it might be kind of inspiring for them to kind of see the pictures and hear the story of Gizmo played out in terms of uh, him loving to eat and sleep and all the things that he does in an average day. Absolutely. And putting a dog, which is, you know, obviously a children's favorite into a book in these wonderful situations really captures a child's imagination. Yeah, he's um, he's a special dog. And, um, you know, the reaction to the first book, My Little Gizmo, The World's Sleepiest Dog, was so good that uh, I kind of got thinking about what would he do later in life, you know, because He's a young dog there, and as he gets older, you know, kind of gave him some of the traits of, of people. Yeah. And so he applies to astronaut training and gets accepted and goes through all that stuff down in Houston and goes on this fantastic ride through the solar system in his um, neat rocket. Uh, even spends a little time on the surface of Mars in his custom rover and uh, go, goes close to the sun and to lots of different planets. Um and then it's it tapping on the different parts of your brain as well, because this is all stuff, you know, very much a lot about. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there were things that I learned about our solar system yeah. just in the process of researching the book. I mean, I had no idea that, uh, you know, Saturn has over 80 moons. I mean, wow. you hear about a few of the big ones, but, you know, who would know that? Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I think the first book, My Little Gizmo, is really a great book for uh, parents or babysitters to read to kids, you know, probably, you know, one and a half to four mm. and um, great opportunity for them to learn how to read and cut their teeth on a book that is specifically designed to be, you know, relatively simple for them to read and yeah. has great illustrations that go with the text. And the series is great because once they get hooked on Gizmo in the first book, there's more adventures for them, which is wonderful. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's so many different things that he could do. Um, I've had a lot of people recommend other ideas, but uh, I think I'm going to stop at three for now and let things percolate. Um, I don't know if you have any um, images of the uh, covers to the books. We do, but, uh, and that's what I was going to ask you next about, that the illustrations are wonderful, the book covers are wonderful. Tell us about working on those or collaborating with an artist to create those. Yeah, it's really, um, <clears throat> excuse me, very interesting. Um, when I was in the Air Force, before I went into private practice, uh, one of the things I did 
was to start a uh, small group within the Air Force that uh, mushroomed into a big enterprise for creating multimedia videos and web programs to educate patients about common everyday problems, whether it's diabetes or pregnancy or having your tonsils out, you know, we had something for everybody. And so in the course of the years that I was doing that, I really kind of became the art director. Mm. And, um, <clears throat> you know, we work with a lot of great uh, digital artists in Denver and Colorado Springs. And, um, you know, they had a lot of insights and ideas of their own. But um, basically, I had to present them, you know, with a vision for, you know, what kind of video are we looking for? What kind of things do we need to mention? Um you know, what is the set and the scene going to look like? So I'm very familiar with what you're doing right now. Right. And I thought I could take that expertise and bring that to the book writing world. And so I got started with a company called Fiverr that connects uh, artists all over the world together. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the very first two books, um, I used an artist in Indonesia, mm -hmm. who was a pleasure to work with, even though we were 12 hours apart. So our schedules were not right on par. And then on this latest book that I hope to have done in the next two to three months and get published, um, I'm using a really talented guy from Serbia. Wow. So it's really become a multinational project, this whole gizmo thing. Exactly, exactly. And since you do have production experience, that leads me to my next question. You're setting me up for all the good questions here. It, <laughs> that is... What about turning this into like an animated series for kids? Because, uh, you know, lots of kids like to read. Other kids are visual learners. So have you thought about that at all? You know, I have given that some thought. And, um, you know, once I once I get everything done um, with the first three books, um, I'm hoping that it will be attractive to a literary agent and maybe getting in with a, a bigger network of traditional publishers that also have connections to, you know, the entertainment industry and that kind of thing. Um, exactly. Once you get some eyeballs on it and, you know, people read it. I mean, that's the best thing about putting a book out there is you never know whose hands it's going to wind up in. It could be Steven Spielberg reading to his kids one day. I mean, you just never know. Yeah. And so you need somebody who wants an original story uh, that's got great characters, great educational value, uh, and would and it's and is entertaining, and turn that into a uh, a series. I think it'd be wonderful. Yeah, without a doubt. I think Gizmo one. The name is great. Kids love it. It's like a fun name to say. They're I'm sure they're captivated by the Yorkshire Terrier, and like I said, all the different settings also sets their imaginations on fire. So I think you're onto something there for sure. Yeah, I'm very excited. Um... You know, I, um, I've written some other books, but they've all been medical things. And so this was a completely new departure for me, just like I'm a new grandpa. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's just so much fun to, um, you know, get up every day and to kind of think about this stuff and communicate with Serbia, communicate with Indonesia, um, communicate with Amazon Publishing Labs, with Atticus Publishing, mm -hmm. you know, some really, really quality people here at Atticus, I have to say. I've been very impressed. Yeah, they're a good group, without yeah. a doubt. Yeah, so it sounds like you're having fun in this new stage of life um, as, you know, book creator and media creator. And uh, those grandkids are uh, something special. You said one's about three months old, the other one's about two and a half years old. Tell us about them a little bit. Yeah, the the oldest one is my grandson, Finch. Mm -hmm. um, both his parents are well over six feet, and he is just huge. Okay. And um, he's walking around and doing all kinds of crazy stuff now. It's really fun to, every month, it seems like he has something new that he's doing. And um, he really likes Gizmo. He, he enjoys the book. And uh, his uh, sister, is her name is Pondy. Um, so they didn't pick very tradi traditional names, but um, she looks like she's going to be pretty tall, too. So <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's great. Well, yeah. being six foot six myself, I like tall people. So, oh, uh, my gosh. Good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Although my kids were in, are not as tall. They're uh, my one son is about six foot two. That's about as tall as they got, which is plenty tall. Trust me. 
Yeah. <laughs> I always say to my kids, you don't want to be the tallest guy in the room. I'm always that guy. It's not always fun. But uh, these books are great. You're stopping at three right now just to see how it goes. But obviously, Gizmo has countless and endless applications. It could be, you know, Gizmo goes to the hospital, Gizmo, you know, Gizmo goes to the park, Gizmo, you know, experiences climate change. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's actually going to be a little bit of a um, environmental message to uh, Gizmo Under the Sea. He's got this really cool submarine and he goes everywhere and he snorkels and scuba dives and anything he can do to get close to the different animals. And we have everything from narwhals to, you know, seals to great white sharks to coral and lobsters and all kinds of different animals with unique facts about them. And uh, one thing that is going to be towards the end of the book is a little bit of a message about, you know, how we're kind of polluting our oceans. There's a big mass of plastic that's about the size of Texas that's just floating out in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of kind of in between Hawaii and California. And it's, you know, it's a mess. Yeah. And we don't want to turn this over to future generations in that kind of condition. You know, we've got to find a way to clean it up and then make sure it doesn't happen again. Especially, so, you know, I'm not beating a drum or anything like that, but I mean, no, but this should know, be we're, we're going to have an illustration about that so that the kids can see that, yeah, you know, they're these animals deserve a clean environment. And, you know, for us to just continuously generate plastic trash and just kind of throw it everywhere is just not fair. I could reach under my desk right now and pull out one of 15 water bottles. You know, it's just it's a shame. Um, and we do have to break that mindset. I mean, I could be filling up a water bottle instead, but uh, we do live in this disposable um, world that doesn't really exist because like you said, it's building up somewhere. Nothing is really disposed of. It's just put somewhere else. Right. Um, it should be an issue that cuts both sides, red or blue. Who doesn't want a perfectly clean, pristine ocean? Um, yes. So teaching our young kids, you know, that is the future as they say. You have written a terrific series of books. They are called My Little Gizmo, Gizmo in Space. And then a forthcoming book is called Gizmo Under the Sea. They are entertaining. They are educational. They are coming to life with wonderful illustrations. You will enjoy reading them to your children, and your children will love hearing about the adventures featuring this lovable Yorkshire Terrier. Dr. Kent Murphy, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you, Logan. My pleasure. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time on Spotlight. <laughs>